Where do you want to go? What do you want to do? Who do you want to be? The Duke of Edinburgh's International Award helps you explore who you are to discover who you could be. Join a band. Try coding. Learn a language. Or find your creative side. Give something back by volunteering in your community. Get active and take on a new sport. Cross a river. Climb a mountain. Walk a new trail. Camp under the stars. Work together with friends to make your own adventures. You choose how, where, what. Join millions around the world just like you and find out what you're made of. So, what are you waiting for? Discover you. It's your time. Your time. My time. My time. Your time. My time. Your time. Your time. My time.
Where do you want to go? What do you want to do? Who do you want to be? The Duke of Edinburgh's International Award helps you explore who you are to discover who you could be. Join a band. Try coding. Learn a language. Or find your creative side. Give something back by volunteering in your community. Get active and take on a new sport. Cross a river. Climb a mountain. Walk a new trail. Camp under the stars. Work together with friends to make your own adventures. You choose how, where, what. Join millions around the world just like you and find out what you're made of. So, what are you waiting for? Discover you. It's your time. Your time. My time. My time. Your time. My time. Your time. Your time. My time.
Where do you want to go? What do you want to do? Who do you want to be? The Duke of Edinburgh's International Award helps you explore who you are to discover who you could be. Join a band. Try coding. Learn a language. Or find your creative side. Give something back by volunteering in your community. Get active and take on a new sport. Cross a river. Climb a mountain. Walk a new trail. Hello, check. Baik, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam. Om sejahtera bagi kita semua, Om Swastiastu, Namo Buddhaya. Selamat datang pada acara Ibninar Yod Engagement. Acara ini dapat terlaksana atas kerjasama Ibni International Business School dengan The Duke of Edinburgh International Award. Teman-teman peserta, berikut adalah tata tertib ipinar pada hari ini dan saya mohon untuk diperhatikan. Baik, saya bacakan. Sebagai informasi, keseluruhan rangkaian program ini akan kami rekam. Tata tertibnya kok hilang? Atau dibacakan aja, Vic? Oke, okay. bacakan aja. Oh, dibacakan aja. Ah. Baik, Ibu. Um, acara ini akan direkam dan selama kegiatan ini berlangsung kami mengharapkan untuk tidak menampilkan video-video yang ataupun gambar yang dilarang atau di ban serta bagi teman-teman yang ingin menanyakan pertanyaan dapat dimasukkan ke dalam kolom uh, chat. Baik, ini dapat kami dapat kita lihat bersama pertanyaan dapat diajukan melalui Zoom chat. Pada saat penayangan lagu kebangsaan Indonesia Raya, peserta diharapkan untuk bersikap tertib. Pada saat pengambilan foto bersama, peserta diharapkan mengaktifkan fungsi kamera. Segala bentuk pelanggaran, panitia berhak mengeluarkan peserta dari ruang webinar. Baik, terima kasih. Sebelumnya saya ucapkan selamat siang dan selamat datang kepada Bapak Profesor Insinyur M. Amanwira Kartakusuma, MSC PhD, selaku Direktur Eksekutif IFMI International Business School, kepada Ibu Rina Setiawita, selaku National Director, The Duke of Edinburgh International World Indonesia, Ibu Riva Zahir Shah, selaku Director Non-Academic IFMI International Business School, para speaker, tim DOE, tim IPMI, dan para peserta IPMINAR pada hari ini. Perkenalkan, saya Fikri, student IPMI 2020. Selanjutnya adalah penayangan lagu kebangsaan Indonesia Raya, diharapkan untuk bersikap tertib.
Baik, kita beranjak ke acara berikutnya. Acara berikutnya adalah open remarks yang akan disampaikan oleh Bapak Profesor Insinyur M. Amman Wirakarta Kusuma, MSC, PhD, selaku Executive Director dari IPMI International Business School. Kepada Bapak Profesor Amman, kami persilahkan. Thank you. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Could you hear me? Crystal clear, Pak. So clear, sir. Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, Ibu Aurina Setiawita, Miss Sue Walker, Mr. Joel Grant, and Ibu Riva, colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, my dear students, I wish everyone is in good health and good spirit. Now we are work from home, study from home, but it doesn't change or discourage our motivation to learn and gain the new knowledge. This afternoon, we are attending a very interesting event with a very interesting theme, which is youth engagement for global action. So my question probably, what are the global action? We have faced previous challenges, war, hunger, poverty, disease, environment, climate change, etc., etc. So we, we do also learn about the 70 goals of SDGs, Sustainable Development Goals by 2030. Then the question come, what is the purpose of our lives? Is it going to be the beneficial to others? Are we going to be meaningful to others? What have been, been be done or being done as action to achieve those goals? And it come up with the, the, the word engagement. What is an empathy involvement? And then you know, working together. And then the next question also, why youth? Why youth is so special? I hope that everybody understand about the generation, right? So we learn about the baby boomers, was born from 1946 until 1964, the generation X, 65 to 1980, Y generation, 81 to 1995. They're also popular called as millennials generation. 25 years old to 40 years old, then come with the Z generation, born in 1996 to 2015. And this generation also called as the Gen Tech, the post millennials, I generation, or even now they call it also the Zoomers because we are now using Zoom all the time. Now they are considered as the highest user of smartphone in the world. Where is your role, our student in AP, and where is your function in this complex and difficult world? What is the role of higher education at IPMI? What is the role of Duke of Edinburgh? We heard about the international award today. So IPMI has the vision to prepare the transformative leaders, preparing youth as the future leaders, provide interconnectedness with other players all over the world, including other youth communities. Well, in this very interesting occasion, I would like to share my own experience. How that I entered into global community, it was starting in 1970, about 50 years ago, when at the time world faced food hunger, famine, poverty in many parts of the world, especially in the developing world. So in my disciplines, we have the food science technology, uh, you know, association across the world. So they help, they call it the SOS 70. This is the organization they call it the IU Force, International Union of Food Science and Technology. So I was lucky, I was one of the invitees. So I came to Washington DC and meet with all young students, younger generation at that time, and also meet the top-notch scientists in the area of food science technology all over the world. But, you know, 
what is happening now? 50 years after that event, I'm elected as the president-elect of the IU Force. It is year 2020 and 2022. And hopefully which then later, we become the president of this organization, 2022-2024. Again, this is just sharing with you that reflecting from my own experience, going global and also you know, engage with so many uh, action in the globe in trying to contribute from your own discipline, your own expertise, I think it's one of the role where we can engage in those areas. So I'm very lucky, I'm very grateful that this, the first ever president from the ASEAN countries, and of course from Indonesia. Now the question to you, do you have to wait for another 50 years to become the global leaders? I hope that my experience didn't probably reflect with your uh, track record later on in the future. Hopefully you can become a global leader as soon as possible. Because now again, the younger generation that take place and play the role very important in the global community. Last December, last year, I was invited to become the jury in the forum, they call it the World Youth Forum in the Netherlands. So I learned a lot from uh, the, the, the youth group coming from all over the world. When I met them and sharing, uh, listening to their projects and ideas, how to face the challenges and problems encountered by communities and also by us as human beings. There are many interesting proposals such as how to teach STEM in the elementary school children, how to anticipate the implication of deforestation on biodiversity and communities in the affected areas, how to help the community that having the mental and psychological problem due to the economic recession, unemployment, how to boost the small coffee producers using internet and digital technology to enter the global markets, and there are many, many other identified topics, very interesting topic in the project. So at that time, I think uh, our students also are represented in that forum. Two students came from IFMI uh, to enter the day competition with, with the others. Therefore, I personally believe that Indonesia is a very rich laboratory for life sciences, social sciences, cultural diversity, humanity, environment, climate change, economy, technology, engineering, etc., etc. I just would like to ask you a question. Do you know who are the Nobel Prize winners on economy in 2019, last year? Anybody knows? Well, the Nobel Economic Prize goes to pioneers in reducing poverty. There are three professors, Abhijit Banerjee and Esther Duflo, both from MIT, and Michael Kramer from Harvard. Esther Duplo is very interestingly was working in Indonesia and Bapenas from 1986 to 1999. So she studied about 30 years in the policy implementation and monitoring on the development as the impress. How so that she learn about the effect of as the impress on the economics of Indonesia. So bring up to the you know very high stage as the Nobel laureate. Therefore, now we are in the programs between IPMI and Duke on Edinburgh. So we are working, sorry, any problem? So working with more than 50 students of IPMI, how can we capitalize this opportunity? How could IPMI students think creatively in developing area for actions? We have InnoLab. We have the Center for Sustainability under LPPM. We have the Case Center. We have programs on green campus. We have training for anti-corruption and many, many other activities also over at our school. And we have student organization like BEM. We have cooperatives. We have alumni association, association for more than 3,000 graduates. We are also collaborating with small and medium enterprises. 
under the Sri Boga flour mills is more than 6,500 enterprises. We are also dealing with the family business. It is now up to us. We from school are trying to work with providing mentors, networking, and facilitating uh, for all this of action. It is now on your hand how that the collaboration between IPMI and the Duke of Edinburgh International Award to initiate these actions. If there is a will, there is a way. So congratulations to our student, to all the student affairs, Buriva and the whole team, and also the Duke of Edinburgh International Award. God bless you. Thank you very much. Thank you very, thank you very much, thank Prof. You, Prof. Aman, yang telah menyampaikan sambutannya. What a magnificent remark, sir. Selanjutnya, kita akan memasuki sharing session yang akan diisi oleh kakak-kakak hebat dan inspiratif. On this sharing session, akan dimoderatori oleh Ibu Riva Zahir Syah MSI. Ibu Riva, the floor is yours. Thank you, Fikri. By the way, have I, I've not mentioned how good looking you are. Very handsome. <laughs> thank you, Ibu. <laughs> Professor Rahman, thank you so much for an inspiring opening remark. And just to respond to your question, do you have to wait 50 years to become a global leader? Prof, I think what we have right now in front of us, there are 174 participants, and most of them are youth, and they've taken that first step on becoming a global leader just by attending this event, this magnificent event. And there are our wonderful, inspiring, Four young people who've actually not just taken the first step, but I think they've gone to the middle of the road. And, and it's just amazing to read how far they have reached. And that's why it will be so interesting for today's session to hear how they have inspired themselves in particular to be able to inspire others. Uh, so, Paman, uh, again, thank you so much. Uh, before, I know you have a lot of uh, appointments after this, and I really thank you for your time to attend this event uh, for the opening remarks. I'd like to introduce you and everyone here, of course, to our partner. So in 2019, it and the Duke of Edinburgh Award International Indonesian Office, we made a partnership and we made a commitment to develop future leaders. And I would like to introduce those who are very committed to the office of the Duke of Edinburgh here in Indonesia and Asia Pacific. So I would like to introduce Ibu Orina Sutiawita to you. Just wave your hand, Ibu Wita. And then we have Sue Walker. And Sue, are you here? To say hi, Sue, if you're here all the way from Australia, I think. Well, uh, if she is here, hello, Sue. Sue Walker is our honorary advisor to the Duke of Edinburgh International Award in Indonesia. We have also Mr. Joel Grant. Hi, Joel, are you here? Okay, they have not reached Indonesia yet, but Joel Grant is also our Asia Pacific Operation Manager for the Duke of Edinburgh. And we have the whole team of the Indonesian office. I see there is Namira here, there is Eko Sijabat, I see there is Putra, Misma. Hi, all of you. Did I miss anyone? But thank you all for really just being here and supporting this partnership. Now I would like to introduce our four outstanding, inspiring speakers. I'd like to start just by reviewing a very in, a brief, brief introduction. Uh, we have uh, Wesley Gozali. You're here, of course. Wesley, where are you? There he is. He's waving all the way from England. Is that right, Wesley? Yeah, no, France. Oh, you're in France. Oh, I'd like to say something in French. I'm sorry, my French is poor, though. But uh, everyone, we have Wesley Gozali. He is as the gold award holder of the Duke of Edinburgh International Award. And he's going to tell us so many interesting experiences about the award, how the award made him to what he is right now. You're, you're amazing. He can cook. For me, that's an amazing thing. And we have also Jessica and Jennifer Tan. Are you here already? Yes. Hi. Hi, ladies, girls, ladies. Okay. So you are sisters, of course. 
Yes, we're twins. You're twins. My God, we have double excellent people here. So uh, Jennifer, uh, Jennifer and Jessica Pan, they are the uh, behind the name behind Art for COVID. And you will also please share us what you have done to contribute to this global action. And lastly, we have Nadira Ahmad. Are you here already, Nadira? Yes. Hi, Nadira. Hi. Nadia is our bronze holder, and she will also talk about at Action Care Youth, yes. what it is, and you will tell us later on. Uh, first of all, I would like to also invite just a brief remark from our national director for the Indonesian Office of the Duke of Edinburgh to just briefly tell us, all of us here, we have 178 people here, and maybe not all of them know about the Duke of Edinburgh. Can I call on Buwita? to just say a few brief explanation. What is the award? Briefa, um, hi young people and young hearted people. <laughs> um, Duke of Edinburgh is a global platform for non-formal education and learning. So academic record is not uh, sufficient to reach uh, the dream in the current world. We need to have a more holistic and more um, passionate uh, area that we want to achieve in this, uh, in your life. So let's listen, learn, and be inspired by uh, the award participant and also award alumni. Thank you, Rita. Thank you so much for that. Now, since you said, uh, talking about the award recipient, I'd like to introduce now Indonesia, our IPMI, sorry, IPMI student, of course. Although uh, our IPMI student is not yet an award recipient, but he's done so much, so much for himself and so much for IPMI also and so much for this global action. Ricky, uh, Rizky Oktorali, are you there, Kiki? Yes, miss, I'm here, miss. Hello, miss. Hi, miss, Kiki, miss, how are yeah, you? It's been well. Our well, IPMI student, BBA, uh, undergraduate, yes. Are you in Jakarta yes, or in Hong Kong? No, miss. I'm in Kalimantan, actually. Oh, my God. Okay. <laughs> These are really global people here. Okay, okay so uh, Kiki or Rizky will share also what he has done as a youth. Yeah, and with me as well. And with me also. Thank you, Kiki, for that. And we're also very lucky to be uh, right here. We have our alumni, MBA, and his name is Teddy Asriel. Mas Teddy, are you here? Yeah, Ibu. Selamat there you are. Man. Why are you so dark? I can't see you, Masteri. Okay, I'll, uh, I'll set up my camera again after this. Okay, so Masteri, Teddy Asriel is our alumni, MBA alumni, and he's been through a mentoring, uh, he's, he's a coach, he's a professional coach for young people. He will also share what he has done in the past to uh, facilitate all you young people to become who you are. Uh, Fikri, can I continue or would you go? Do I have to go back to you again, or can I just go straight to our first speaker? I think you can continue, Miss. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Fikri. All right, okay. Wesley, so I'm going to go to you. And first of all, yes. you need to tell us of your achievements. And uh, because, you know, everyone, you know what? Wesley was, is probably, I don't know many people who have been inside Buckingham Palace. I know a lot of people have seen the outside of Buckingham Palace, but what I heard is that you are a gold recipient and you were awarded somewhere inside the palace. And True. besides that, the biggest thing is that you are what we call the Nunchaku World Championship of 2018. Oh, I only know Nunchaku from Bruce Lee film. <laughs> so Wesley, please yeah. do inspire us and tell us your story on what you are right now and how you achieved this gold award. What is it that you did and how, what motivated you to be able to achieve such a prestigious award? All right. All right. So I'm going to start here now. Right now it's actually 10 a.m. in France. Uh, I'm in a master degree. I'm currently running a master degree in the Burgundy School of Business. So it's a, in France, we have a Burgundy province. I'm currently studying there. First, I am, I can say I'm a cut lingual, so I speak four languages, English, Indonesian, French, and Chinese, Mandarin. So I started with Dofli, Duke of Edinburgh uh, program in my high school. 
Uh, my high school before was uh, BPK Penabur. And there is the first time I met uh, Sir Thomas, Miss Wita, and everyone else in the team, including Sue Walker and then jo Joe. Yeah, I first met everyone there. I started off as a, as a hobby. Yeah, I only have two passions since I was uh, really young. Uh, it was fighting and fighting and fighting. <laughs> I wanted to be an athlete. I want to be good. When you want to be good, you have to set your goal. When you have a goal, you need process to achieve it. And then when you already re achieve one goal, you don't stop. You go again to the next goal. You go global. When you already reach the top, you don't get satisfied. You can be happy, but you're not satisfied. You want to, to be more than just who you are. So the world is changing and everybody, I think, is changing every day. I think what motivates me the most, we have to catch up. Always learn something new, always adapt. Like my heroes, of course, everybody has their own heroes. My personal favorite is a philosopher. Also, he's very famous as well. Uh, anybody probably heard his name. Uh, he's a very famous actor as well, Bruce Lee. And he always said, be like water. Empty your cup. Be like water. You have to learn. Means you always have to learn something new. Open your mind. Don't limit to your knowledge. Don't be cocky. Don't be prideful. Be humble. So this is a very first lesson. You always have an open heart, open mind to learn. And then the next thing he said, a water can flow or it can crash. You turn up water into the cup, it turns into a cup. You turn into a teapot, it turns into a teapot. So it, it reteaches us to learn and to adapt. It always uh, have the same sounding with the Darwin theory. The, the strongest uh, the species that could adapt the most is the one that can survive better. It's not the strongest one or not the fastest one, but the species that could adapt the most. So this is what keep push me going. It keep me going on and on and on until now. Can I have my slides on? I think I already sent my slides uh, uh, yesterday. So in my slides, I put a short history. Uh, I started in 2010 and then I become an athlete, graduate from uh, BP Kapanabur High School, become a, na uh, a national athlete as well. I have my black belt degree. And then I start working. Yeah, I start working. I didn't go directly to university study first because I, I'm thinking I still want to develop myself before I enter the university world. 2012, I graduated. 2017, I start my bachelor degree. So there's a five year gap, five years for me to, to enrich myself with a lot of knowledge. And here I am now, 2020, I just started my master degree. So I think that's a very brief history. Oh yeah, for slide number five, I think, with all of my photos there, the things I do. Okay, the, the, okay this is a fun slide. Okay, this, this is a fun slide. Uh, okay, so let's start with this one. So in my university life, uh, currently I am joining a student association. Lots of the student association. Uh, I also do association of arts, association of Jew. Jew in France is a like association for fun video games. But then we're not focusing on fun. Uh, in my school, I'm an e-sport coach. So I train students to be, how do we say, a neat, uh, an e-sport athlete, not an athlete, e-sport player, I think. Yeah, the proper word is e-sport player. Now there is a new industry in the business. E-sport is growing well, and I think a lot of the young people really loves it. Yeah. Uh, and then the second picture, it was me with the Marines. I also trained the Marines before in Indonesia, in Cilandak. I also do uh, martial arts. There's me, my, my photo over there uh, with the black belt. Yeah. <laughs> And then I also do pastry and cooking. Uh, it was my hobby. And since I was young, uh, I also do, do a lot of classes. I teach classes to cook, teach classes to do sport, teach classes to do uh, martial arts. I also have my own fire dancing team. So 
uh, I also teach fire dancing classes. So there's a lot of stuff that I've been doing. And what I want to share here is don't limit yourself to only what you know and only what you want. There's a lot of chances, infinite possible chances that you can grasp. The only thing that you need to do is efficient energy management, not time management. But because if you have sufficient energy management, although every day you only have 24 hours a day, you can win four hours per day if you have sufficient energy. That's how I, that's my secret. I have, I have my secret of energy management and I can do all this stuff within just short time. I think five years, five years, maybe for some of you are short, maybe for some of you are very long. Okay, can I move to the next slide? This is a very fun slide. I already reveal one and I bet there, uh, some of you know two faces here. I want to know if somebody knows anyone below, can you, the, the, the person on the bottom picture, can anyone put their speak, uh, microphone on and say his name? Guess. Kevin Durant. Yeah, and what does he say? I think he quotes something on the left. Anybody recognize his quote? If anybody Will recognize Smith. his quote. Okay. Will Smith is also one of my heroes. Okay, you see on the left, there are four quotes, four of my favorite quotes that I keep holding on for years. And I want you to guess, and I want you to match. Uh, each of them say one quote from the left. Can you match what Kevin Durant said? Is it a person who never failed, never tried anything new? No, it's not him. Anyone else want to try? Hard work beats Peace talent out. when the talent doesn't work hard enough. Bingo. Bingo, correct. Hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work hard enough by Kevin Durant. You know, when you face adversaries, when you face competitiveness, competitors, you will see a lot of people in the world, they are very talented. But sometimes talented people doesn't have dedication. How you overcome this adversary is through hard work because hard work beats talent when talent doesn't say hard enough. Every time people say, Wesley, wow, you're so good at what you're doing. You're talented. No, you're wrong. I'm not talented. I never born with a talent. I train. I always train that. The biggest concentration that I put on is training. It's not talent from gifted when you were born. Maybe some people are very exceptional, but if you want to grow, you need time, you need energy, you need to train, you need to get going. You cannot run when you're not walking, right? The second one, I already revealed it, always empty your cup, be like water. Third one, all the greatest thing in life are in the other side of fear. Who said that? Can anybody guess? Anybody? <laughs> Hello? Bruce Lee? Anybody? No. Uh, not yet. You can, we have era of technology here. You can Google. <laughs> you can Google the, the quotes and then the name. Poof. This is also the easiest way of globalization. Modern technology. Anything you don't know, ask Sir Internet. Ask Mr. Google. So there is no excuse of saying, oh, I don't know. In university life, what I'm facing right now, the teachers doesn't accept a no or don't know for an answer. They will say, this era, you have internet. You can ask Google for any answer you want. So uh, the lesson is here. Uh, with the touch of your finger, you can have anything. So there's a lot of possible chances for young people like us. What a great time to live. So all the greatest things in life are on the other side of fear, it's by Will Smith. Will Smith was one of my favorite actors before. He played like uh, Men in Black. And then there's a lot of other movies. Okay, what I want to pick up from this, the lesson I pick up from here, when you dream and you want to make it happen, you will think, ah, that's impossible. But then when you dream of something and it makes you scared, means you dream big enough. 
it dream, you dream so big that it scares you to your bones. Okay? If you can make it happen, then you're facing yourself a challenge. A challenge is always what push you forward. Okay? A challenge is always what makes a human human. If you live your life too easy and there's no challenge and there's no fear, what's the point of living? Right? Uh, one of my favorite athletes always said that, always push me under pressure because when I'm under pressure, I can fare better. Floyd Mayweather. And the last one, a person who never failed, never tried, it's anything new. Last but not least was Einstein. Yeah. The lessons here, don't be afraid to fail. Don't be afraid to make mistakes. When you make mistakes or you fail, is the thing that's determining you, what's you, who you are, how you react to your failure. Either you learn or you quit. Learning is forever, but so does quitting. Okay, I hope I share really good lessons. Can we move on to the next, next slide, please? Thank you. So, this team, I was invited by, uh, by Ipmi and Miss Wita to speak about SGD Action Zone. So, uh, last yesterday, I sent like four points, but then Miss Wita told me I can do five, four, five, uh, three, four, five, ten, and then 16. But let's talk about the points I know the most. Good health and well-being. It's correlated with the previous thing I mentioned, energy management. Yeah, it's a type of time management. If you have a good energy management, you will win four hours of your life per day instead of just doing regular 24. When I was, uh, when I was young, uh, my trainer used to told me, imagine that if you do exercise and you still get sick, everybody who, who's still human can get sick. Okay, can fall ill, can get sick. If you do exercise, you're healthy, keeping a good diet, you still get sick. What about those people who doesn't exercise at all? You are more vulnerable. What about those people who doesn't eat clean at all? You get sick more faster. You, get, you have uh, energy malfunction, energy malnutrition. You have like overlapping of energy or what we call it is uh, energy surplus means you consume more than what you burn okay so uh this is really important because when you have like a fresh mind a fresh brain needs a good nutrition a good exercise then you can think you can have that focus you can have that concentration and then what i've been doing is related to number four the quality of education education is not always about books it's not always about what you read, what they taught you in universities. Being smart is not always about knowing, uh, knowing knowledge, but also can apply to situations. So this is a good term, a good uh, idea about education. Okay, but most important of all, before, uh, before it, you can uh, afford this education, what about the accessibility? You can see there's differences in the social economy, social classes. People have different access to education. Some of them can go to education. Some of them cannot go to education. Okay. Some of them who are lucky enough to afford university studies, some of them cannot. So by providing access to education, I think it's fair enough to say everybody deserves a quality education. Next to number five and 10, I believe in equality. I fight against inequality. I believe either when you're man or woman, you should have the same chance, the same rights, the same responsibility, equal weight on your shoulder to run your family because it's only fair as a human being. Everybody is created equal, although individually everything is special, not different. So. Treat your partner, treat your friends, male, female, without any difference. Treat them like they are how should be treated. 
and I reduce inequality. Inequality doesn't always stay with different color, different eyes, different skin color, different hair color. Inequality also with capabilities. You can say that uh, if I have a handicap, I'm not equal with the rest of the group. Okay. But I think everybody deserves the same chance. Before, I also teach, uh, I also train. Uh, some people with a uh, handicap, they they are deaf student. It's a program under Dovi, uh, Dovi Duke of Edinburgh. And I like to share some of the knowledge I know, like training in martial art, training in nunchucks. And this is really good. So I think this covers most of my sharing. Uh, the next slide will be a thank you. <laughs> so you can move to the next slide. And I think I will pass it to the Next speaker. Thank you so much. A great big hand for Wesley Gozali. It's, I mean, amazing, Wesley. I was Thanks. just so inspired by what you were saying at such a young age. You have so much wisdom. And um, undoubtedly, I think another youth will also put your picture alongside Einstein, Bruce Lee, Will Smith. <laughs> I believe that. Wait and see. Uh, we're, we have a lot of questions coming up, but we'll just hold on to the questions after uh, the other speakers have, has, have uh, had it a chance to speak. Uh, is that okay, yeah. Wesley? Yeah? yeah, I will excuse myself because I'm going back to class because of COVID. Oh, okay. My then, class got rescheduled to here and I have like permission for like maximum one hour. Do you have and one minute, we'll... two minutes just for questions? One or two questions? Okay, one, two minutes. I think, uh, but right. I think I can come back later during the Q and A. You can do that. Okay, great, yeah. Wesley. Anyway, thank you so much right now, and good luck with the class. We'll see you soon. Yeah, see you soon. Thanks, thank you. Wesley. Thank you. Thanks so much, Wesley. You're all welcome. Okay, uh, someone, someone. Bonjour. 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 Uh, Teman-teman, yeah. uh, jangan jangan takut. Kita uh, maksudnya kalau pakai bahasa Indonesia juga boleh. Silakan. Ini kenapa kita pakai bahasa Inggris? Karena kembali lagi ada beberapa teman-teman dari Australia. Jadi allow me to speak in English and, and the others because uh, I think we've seen in the chat there is Sue Walker, there is Susie and Joel all the way from Australia. Just give a hand, just give a wave for Sue, Susie and Joel. Thank you for being here. Thank you so much. Okay, we're going to move to uh, another inspiring talk from Jessica and Jennifer. You're there, ladies. Okay, you're unmuted now. So tell us, uh, I mean, you are also very young and you've already organized a very, a very positive movement, uh, especially this pandemic is very relevant to what you are doing. And please share what made you do that. Please share with us what made you, how the program also, the Duke of Edinburgh program also motivated you to be Perhaps there's a contribution from the program to, to, to enable you to do all this. Jessica or Jennifer, siapa duluan? And which one are you? Jessica or Jennifer, you look so much alike. I'm Jessica. I'm Jennifer. Okay, so, all right. Hi, Jessica, Jennifer. The floor is yours. Silakan. Thank you. I'll be sharing my screen first. Sure, sure. Is it all good? Can you see? All good. Wow, save the orangutan. All right, I'm oh, sorry. So good afternoon, everyone. We're so excited to be here. Thank you for having us. My name is Jessica Tan, and this is my twin sister, Jennifer Tan. Today, we'll be talking about our project, Art for COVID, uh, with the aim to save the orangutans. And it was also part of our experience as participants in the Duke of Edinburgh Award and in support of the Sustainable Development Goals. So today we have around 30 slides to cover, but please don't worry, we won't take too much of your time. Today's main four agendas are climate change, why orangutans, starting small in the future. So the first agenda for today is in support to SDG goal number 13, which is climate action. So I'll be talking about climate change. It is not a false alarm. So I'd like to show you guys this. 2019 was the all time second warmest year. And according to the Jakarta Post, 
In 46 years, Indonesia's temperature will rise by 3.8 degrees Celsius, and the global temperature by 2100 will rise by about 3.2 degrees Celsius. Can you imagine how hot that will be? Moving on, in support of goal number 15, which is life on land, we'll be talking about orangutans. So previously, Jennifer already talked about climate change. Now we'll be talking how it affects us. Climate change doesn't only affect us, but they also affect orangutans. How? The rising temperatures and fires threatens their already scarce food resources, and deforestation destroys their habitats. Uh, due to climate change, they've also adjusted, so orangutans now have longer birth cycles from an average of six years to eight years. Can you imagine how in the future there will be less and less baby orangutans? According to WWF, there are only less than 15,000 of the population left. So, why are we doing this? Orangutans belong to Indonesia for the world. And because they are our national pride, they are also our responsibility. So let's help them. So in support to SDG goal number 17, which is partnership, let's start small today because every step matters. So before we continue, I want to share this quote by Vincent van Gogh. Great things are not done by impulse, but by a series of small things brought together. So our journey started in April 2020. Art for COVID actually started as a two-person organization. And we did Art for COVID for our Duke of Edinburgh community service. And in total, we raised over 11 million in three months to COVID-19 relief which was donated to healthcare workers and frontliners. And how we did it was we donated, uh, we gave donators a, digi a custom digital illustration in exchange for their donation. And as you can see on the screen, these are our illustrations. And yes, they are different even though we're twins. The left style is by Jessica and style number two on the right is by myself. And then in June, 2020, uh, came our concern about orangutans endangered by climate change. We started another Duke of Edinburgh community service project, but this time the aim was to adopt one orangutan per month by donating some of the profit we got from our art shop. And as you can see on the screen, we are now proud parents of three orangutans, which we donated in June, July, and August, Bumi, Mema, and Monita. And our journey didn't end there. In August this year, we decided we wanted to try out something new. Uh, so we wanted to fundraise to support orangutans who are endangered and more at risk due to the pandemic because of low funds by starting a social entrepreneurship to reach and educate more people. So as you can see, this is our goal. We aim to reach at least 50 million rupiah in six months by February next year. I know what you're thinking, is it possible? Well, in the beginning, we received a lot of doubt, but now with 27 other selfless and passionate individuals, and with your help, the answer is yes. So how are we doing that? Well, first of all, we created our very own clothing line, which we built from the ground up. We designed, we produced, and we're selling it by ourselves. And the key here is that 100% of the profit is donated. Second, we're trying to reach and educate more people by posting on our Instagram to raise awareness and we're trying to recruit more influencers who are willing to support and join our good cause and uh, voluntarily widespread our mission. So this is one of the t-shirt designs that we're selling. It's called Receipt and the concept is that on the front, there is a list of some human, uh, some acts of human decency that you can do to help stop the spread. And on the back, it reminds us that it costs nothing to be a decent person and stop the spread. Second is called ignorance. And Jennifer is actually wearing the shirt right now. <laughs> and the concept for this is that ignorance isn't pride. If you, on the, the words on the back try to convey the message that if you're ignorant to the pandemic and to the safety measures, then it will affect other people around you and the world negatively. The third design 
uh, which I'm wearing right now, <laughs> is called Be the Change. So we chose butterflies because they represent change, change that, will, that we will all go through. Um, and it is up to us if we want to change for the better or for the worse. And this last one is called Save the Orang Thames. And it's actually uh, a work in progress because this is our one of our designs for volume two, where we will try to create designs that uh, relate to awareness for endangered animals. So these are our stakeholders for today. Uh, now we have friends, families, and customers. JNY School, IPMI, hopefully, that's why we put you guys there. And the Duke of Edinburgh's International Award, of course. And we're also in proposal to WWF and Boss Foundation, and also inviting more brands to collaborate with us. So join our movement today. We hope you guys are inspired and we're inviting even more Gen Zs, you guys, to help create an impact to help make a, a better earth. Also endorsing so you guys can share to your friends or any form of endorsement that can share our good cause. Partnership, we're inviting any entities such as schools, other nonprofit organizations who wants to support and collaborate with us. Uh, so I'll be talking a bit in Indo, because I've been talking in English. So, ini tim kita, kalian bisa lihat, di sini bukan cuma ada Indonesia, tapi juga ada other countries, seperti uh, US, Canada, and the UK. And this consists of not only high school and middle school students, but also university students. Ini tim 2020, uh, which consists of 29 of us. Dan ini diilustrasi oleh salah satu member kita dari content creation team. So what's next? So uh, you guys can see on the screen and skim, skim through what we've learned. But I want to emphasize on one thing. Gen Z can be the driver of a good cause for a better wor world. Uh, this is because we are the future leaders. So we encourage you guys to help make a change to make the world a better place. And I hope, we hope, our journey will continue with ease e, uh, to engage more schools, more nonprofit organizations to support our movement, A, to amplify and reach more and more Gen Z to educate the importance of good causes as to sustain. Uh, and we hope our movement can be continued in the following years, E, to expand and help other endangered animals that live in Indonesia. So we've come to the end of our presentation. Thank you buat semua yang udah dengerin kita. And don't forget, you can start small too. Today for only 150K. <laughs> you can purchase our shirts right now. It's at artforcovid.id on Instagram and artforcovid on Shopee. And this is in support of the SDG goals number 13, number 15, and number 17. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jessica and Jennifer Tan. Luar biasa. Uh, I'm just speechless. I'm just speechless. Amazing. And I'm not muda. I mean, if you've done all that, my God, I feel like, you know, really, really small now. I mean, amazing what you've done. Uh, then, uh, betul, Begawan, you've said it in the chat. Uh, it is very inspiring. So, teman-teman, teman-teman dari students IPMI maupun peserta lainnya, selalu ada caranya kok. You know, just taking that first step. Tinggal melangkah sedikit aja. Saya selalu mengatakan kepada teman-teman students uh, di IPMI adalah It's not about will I make a difference, tapi it's about what difference can I make. Ya, yeah? Jadi bukan apakah saya bisa bikin perubahan. Jangan tanya gitu, tanya seperti kayak Jessica, Jennifer, dan Wesley. What difference okay, can you make? Then, and you can do it. One single step, just one small step. Oke, okay, kita tahan dulu pertanyaan karena banyak saya sih yakin uh, a lot of you will ask questions. Uh, let's go to our next speaker, Nadira Ahmad, bronze holder. Nadira, are you there? Yay, yes. Oke, okay, silakan Nadira Ahmad, founder of Action Care Youth. Please share us what you've done. Um, first of all, I just start this DOE from my school program and this is very interesting for me and I'm like I also think this really animates me because I like something like this self-improvement. And instead of choosing a tutor, I choose campaign because I think the campaign is a global way that can influence 
many people around the world. I'm also driven on global issues, not because it is interesting, not because of the fact, because as a human, um, should care about everything on this earth. And that makes me want to make an organization for, for the youth, because um, we are, as the Generation Z, have to um, care about the global issues right now. Then I decided to make an organ organization called Action Care Youth. You can find it in Instagram. And today, for I'm going to talk about and I'm going to share my thought about gender equality, especially for for the um, the role of women for this COVID nineteen. Okay, can I start? Sure. Okay. Um, for me, gender equality is not an only a fundamental human right, but a necessary foundation for a peaceful, prosperous, and sustainable world. There has been progress over the last decades. More girls are going to school. Fewer girls are forced into early marriage, especially in this in this COVID-19, in this pandemic. Have you have you heard like um, banyak banget orang uh, banyak banget anak muda sekarang di masa pandemik menikah muda? And then more women are serving in parliament and positions of leadership. And laws are being reformed to advance gender equality. Despite these gains, many challenges remain. Discriminatory laws and social norms remain pervasive. Women continue to be underrepresented at all levels of political leadership. And one in five women and girls between the ages of 15 and 49, based on my, um, based on myself, report experiencing physical or sexual violence by an intimate partner within a 12-month period. The effects of the COVID-19 pandemic could reverse the limited progress that has been made on gender equality and women's rights. The coronavirus outbreak exacerbates exciting inequalities for women and girls across every sphere, from, from health and the economy to security and social protection. COVID-19 has profoundly different outcomes for men and women, and not just in terms of their health. For a virus that infects people indiscriminately, why does gender have such an effect? From bus drivers to prime ministers, people from all walks of life are falling seriously ill with this COVID-19, right? This COVID-19 is very, very impact for the gender equality. This has drawn remarks that the disease doesn't discriminate, but the coronavirus is, after all, a more or less inanimate piece of floating genetic material. Is it not capable of active discrimination? And yet, the virus is having certainly different effects of different groups of people. One of the most pronounced divides to emerge regards gender and how COVID-19 is affecting men and women differently isn't just in the way that the virus is making us sick, it's also in our long-term health and economy perspective. Women play a disproportionate role in responding to the virus, including a frontline healthcare. We know that so many women frontline healthcare in Indonesia and around the world and carries at home. Women's unpaid care work has increased significantly at this pandemic as a result of school closures and increased needs of older people. Women are also harder hit by the economic impacts of COVID-19 as they disproportionately work in insecure labor markets. Nearly 60% of women work in the informal economy, which puts them at a greater risk of falling into poverty. This pandemic has also led um, to a steep increase in violence against women and girls. With lockdown measures in place, many women are trapped at home, like, <laughs> like us, maybe with their abusers struggling to assess, uh, assess our fees that are suffering from cuts and restrictions. Emerging data shows that, that since the outbreak of the pandemic, violence against women and girls, particularly domestic violence, has intensified. Women are not only the hardest hit by this pandemic, they are also the backbone of recovery in communities. Putting women and girls in the center of economy 
will fundamentally drive better and more sustainable development outcomes for all, support a more rapid recovery, and place the world back to, on the footing to achieve the certain sustainable development goals. Every COVID-19 response plans and every recovery package and budgeting of resources needs to address the gender impacts of this pandemic. This means, one, including women and women's organization in COVID-19 response planning and decision making. Two, transforming inequalities of unpaid care work into a new inclusive care economy that works for everyone. And three, designing socioeconomic plans with an intentional focus on belief and features of women and girls. UN Women, um, United Nations of Women have developed a rapid and target response to mitigate the impact of the COVID-19 crisis on women and girls and to ensure that the long-term recovery benefits them. Focus on five priorities. One, gender-based violence, including domestic violence, is mitigated and reduced. Two, social protection and economic stimulus package serve women and girls. Three, people support and practice equal sharing of care work. Four, women and girls lead and participate in COVID-19 response planning and decisions making. Five, data and coordination mechanism include gender perspective. The COVID-19 pandemic provides as an opportunity for radical positive action to redress long-standing inequalities in multiple areas of women's life and build a more just and resilient world profound shock to our um, societies and economies. The COVID-19 pandemic underscores societies and um, relies on women both on the front line and home, at home, while exposing structural inequalities across every sphere around the world from health to economy, security to social protection. In time of this crisis pandemic, when resources are spared and institutional capacity is limited. So, women and girls, sorry, sorry. <laughs> women and girls face disproportionate impacts with far-reaching consequences that are only further amplified in context of frugality, conflict, and emergencies. Hard gets for women's rights are also under threat. Responding to the pandemic is not just about long-standing inequalities, but also about building a resilient world in the interest of everyone, with women at the center of recovery. And I'm here to speak up. This pandemic is being lived by all people around the world, all gender, all gender around the world. So stop discriminating women in the second class on this pandemic. Women have an important role to women is loyal and woman is priority. And um, can you go to the previous slide? We have about five minutes left, Nadira. Sorry yeah. about this. Can you go to the um actually I just read the summary for this PowerPoint, so I I just okay. it by myself. Okay, um, if you want to explore many cases um, for the women and girls around the world, you can go to United Nation of Women. And yeah, that's all. I want to share my thought about gender equality in this COVID-19 pandemic. Thank you. Thank you, Nadira. Again, uh, there are so many questions, I think, and even I want to ask you questions also, but we need to be, uh, okay, we'll just have, just because of time limit, uh, I'd like to introduce now uh, the speaker from from it me, Doctor Ali. Yes. Yes. Now. <laughs> yeah. Can I share the screen? Bentar ya. Sure. Bentar. Jadi teman-teman, uh, in the meantime, saya bilang aja teman-teman, tidak ada kata-kata ini ya apa? Uh, tidak perlu pesimis ya. Uh, we can do anything. Ini anak muda semuanya. Nadira, Jessica, Jennifer, Wesley. My God. And, and it just starts itu yang saya bilang, uh, kemauan mungkin ya, kemauan, semangat ya. Oke, okay, uh, Kiki, you're okay? Yes, miss. Yeah. Oh, okay. Let's see. We can start ya. Yeah. Oke, okay. jadi, hello everyone. Halo, halo IPMI students, halo youth, halo remarkable speakers and Buriva. Dan, sorry, I cannot press this. Oh, anyway, so, 
Ini CV saya, nama saya Rizky. You guys just simply call me Kiki. Uh, I just graduated from IPMI last month. Uh, udah semester terakhir ceritanya, jadi sisa-sisa experience ini benar-benar sudah di-compile di uh, presentation ini. So, today my agenda tuh sebenarnya cuma satu, guys. Yaitu, saya cuma mau sharing aja. Saya sebenarnya dibilang punya achievement gimana juga nggak terlalu, tapi kalau bisa di... Kalo ngomongin involvement, ya, yeah, I, I quite have some memories juga di IPMI ataupun eh, in my university life, gitu. That I want to share those with you. Jadi, um, SDG dulu ngomongin ini ya. So, kalian pasti udah tahu nih 17 poin ini, kan? Tapi mungkin kalian nggak tahu masing-masing uh, itu tentang apa aja sih. Jadi, in general, itu SDG itu uh, represent our daily problems sebenarnya. Kalau you can you can just think of any problems yang kalian lihat di dunia ini atau di sebelah kalian, itu pasti salah satunya ada fall under one of these categories or even more. Jadi basically United Nations ini beserta Nations United itu punya agenda 15 year plan to actually solve these 17 problems. Kalau bisa semuanya, tapi kan it's kind of impossible, tapi mereka harus ngelihat adanya uh, progres untuk uh, SDGs ini by 2030. 10 more years, guys. So, ya. Yeah. Sebenarnya, SDGs ini, itu patokan patokan basic knowledge-nya itu ada tiga ini nih. Tiga core, uh, core elements ini. Yaitu economic growth, social inclusion, and environmental protection. Or, we call it 3P, people, planet, profit. Maybe, maybe you guys have heard about that, right? So, The special thing about SDG ini itu involves all stakeholders. Mulai dari kalian sendiri nih semuanya nih, ada 108 yang ikut nih. 171, governments, schools, organizations, and you just name it. Mereka semua work on these SDGs. Gitu. Anyway, SDG for me itu, uh, SDG itu so great. Susah dan pasti ada cobaannya terus. Entah itu dari funding, dari acceptance dari you know project project stuff gitu yang susah banget emang tapi kan where's the fun without those goncangan kan jadi SDG is as cool as it sounds because it opens up limitless opportunities yang kalian bisa kembangin di diri kalian maupun di society gitu so my interest tuh ada tiga ini yang saya yang saya sudah lah apa lakuin sebelumnya yaitu I'm a business student so I'm motivated for decent economic growth and then uh, responsible consumption, recycling, clean energy, and stuff, then also partnership of the goals, especially this partnership of the goals. Karena I'd like, I really love sharing about SDGs dan tukar pikiran sama other activists and, you know, youngsters. Anyway, so, kalian pilih sendiri ya, ini kan topiknya kan tentang SDG, kalian pilih sendiri, mana sih yang kalian pengen fokus di sini, gitu. Itu pertanyaan pertama dari saya, terserah. Kalau kalian belum bisa jawab, Kalian mungkin bisa jawab ini. What kind of what what problems you're trying to solve? Yang kalian bisa kayak kepikiran atau emang lagi ngejalanin itu, just good. Tapi kalau masih belum bisa, ask yourself this. Do you know your passion? Kalau masih nggak bisa lagi, ini tips banget ya. Ikut-ikut dulu aja. Pokoknya ikutan any movements, any programs, any anything yang involves tentang SDG atau organizational stuff gitu. So, my first journey began in ISAC. Kebetulan ISAC itu, uh, it's, it's quite big, the organization, di seluruh Indonesia ada, dan kebetulan ada di IPMI waktu itu. So, these are my positions, kind of like formal positions di IPMI, uh, ISAC in IPMI. So, actually, in total, I did like five social projects untuk ISAC ini. I will share with you after this. Jadi, Uh, my first project, I went to Malaysia for an international uh, exchange, six weeks. Itu namanya Miracle Project. Basically, itu seperti kayak educational engagement tentang environment, tentang recycling, tentang uh, upcycling, dan segala macam. Ini foto-fotonya, kalian bisa, you know, pictures say words, you know. Jadi, we had conferences to engage, to get engaged with the students, and then we went to uh, many schools to educate them about recycling, upcycling, and then eco-friendly eco lifestyle, and so on. 
And I also joined international uh, conference too, to pitch something about our miracle project to basically yeah, this workshop ni pojok ke bawah. Then we we also went to the jungle. So it's kind of fun to join this kind of projects, guys. Any projects. So next, any technical stuff that I learned from my environment project. I went to NGO yang ngerjain tentang uh, recycling warehouse lah ceritanya. Terus we did eco enzymes and yeah, sustainable business. So these things are what I do in Indonesia. Saya kerja sama, ini kerja sama sama Alizar, sama Danon, sama Amsa, terus sama uh, Mendikbud dan masih banyak lagi. Basically untuk kita punya project masing-masing, tapi mostly tentang education sih. Jadi uh, kita kerja sama-sama sekolah atau organisasi sesi mana, datengin bule-bule uh, youth kita untuk sharing experience dan knowledge mereka untuk local community kita. Itu, those things are ya. Yeah. Dan this one, uh, Ipmi juga uh, apa ya, was honored to do this project, this event actually. It's called One Brick One Hope. Jadi kita kerjasama sama Indonesia uh, Happy Hearts Fund Indonesia. Tuh. Jadi Happy Hearts Fund Indonesia itu sebenarnya yang suka rebuild rebuild uh, schools gitu yang tertinggal di luar-luar uh, pedalaman sana kayak contoh di Kupang, di NTT segala macam gitu. Jadi kebetulan Ipmi kedatangan uh, Happy Hearts Fund International Foundernya yaitu Miss Petra Nemkova untuk basically do the fundraising. Jadi uh, ini ini target school kita yang mau kita rebuild dengan fundraisingnya. Uh, ah yeah, ya not decent, you know. Dan ini standarnya yang kita mau achieve dari fundraising itu. So hopefully ini tuh bagus banget untuk uh, kenyamanan lokal community di sana. So this is the day she came and then you know workshops and then fun activities while raising funds. But in total uh, we we collaborated and then uh, apa ya bisa nyumbang alhamdulillah 65 juta out of 300 million yang kita mau trying to achieve gitu. Actually uh, this stuff yang you know kita mau engage sama kita mau uh, apa namanya get involved aja gitu. Meskipun kan ini kan secara KPI kan belum terpenuhi tapi at least we contribute to something right. So next uh, I was chosen to with the other friend uh, Nan her name is Nanya. Uh, we represented IPMI the uh, United Nations Office of South South uh, Cooperation Youth Dialogue Conference di Hong Kong kemarin. Jadi itu basically uh, kayak international conference biasa aja. Mas maksudnya kayak mereka pasti serve agenda tentang uh, SDG knowledge induction and then also debates and also project pitching and then you know like alumni atau uh, apa namanya sustainable business practitioners to share about their ideas, their motivation and stuff like that gitu. Basically, then of course at working time. Tapi key takeaways dari sini yang saya bisa share ke sama kalian itu uh, all of those conferences and your involvement in SDG, they will include project pitching, itu for sure. Karena tiket kalian, tiket saya di sini aja itu something that I need to pitch gitu loh. Jadi uh, itu juga Salah satu kriteria dari, kriteria dari kayak perlombaan yang harus uh, kita menangkan di situ dan we won actually, so yeah. And we learned about design thinking. Design thinking itu like the way of the way you think of you know especially this SDG gitu. Tapi sebenarnya Pak Teddy after this itu lebih master lagi soal design thinking. So he might share anything with this. Tapi yang menurut saya yang paling penting tuh jujur aja learned about networking di sini karena there were important people joining the conference and you guys can talk like face to face with them itu penting banget that's where that was where i got my first internship offer here tapi itu tentang kayak bukan sustainability sih tapi kayak based on startup hong kong yang mau set up business di indonesia and both of us help it out aja happening dan masih jalan gitu anyway uh, so i actually didn't don't i didn't prepare any you know like wisdom quotes about leadership i i think i personally think leadership itu bagi setiap orang beda-beda dan it's just for you to just discover your own leadership honestly tapi dari dari semuanya secara general you need to understand these words yeah bear with me first of all 
being a transactional leader, which is the easiest leadership form yang kalian bisa lakukan. Okay? Transactional meaning like just just get your KPIs done, being just being responsible, you know, uh, being a good manager. That's what it is for me. But this is another level, guys, being transformational. Okay, like you need to have your own purpose in doing everything yang kalian pengen capai. You need to have vision with this, including those transactional leadership skills yang pasti bantu kalian untuk mencapai impi kalian. Abis ini ada lagi guys, yaitu thought leaders. Thought leaders itu apa ya? They are being known uh, as those who accomplish to make a difference. Itu penting banget difference-nya itu karena it happens, okay? Entah itu dari SDGs, being sustainable atau kayak great innovation. Saya kayak misalnya Apple atau apa itu kan thought leader semua BP Beyond Petroleum. So yeah, what you this uh, apa gimana ya? Cara kalian ngebedain dari leaders lain tuh gimana? That's what makes thought leaders. And this one in this case tentang SDG yang kalian lakukan saat ini. Gitu. So, gimana sih cara jadi good leaders gitu? Entah itu transactional transformation segala macam. Semua harus ada solusi, guys. Karena kalau nggak ada solusi namanya wacana doang. Gitu. Satu, you can just think of Uh, any problems and then you try to solve it with your team with yourself and yeah and then next one you cannot go all of your journey alone you need to stand with your team stand with anyone else so that's why you need to empower others to follow your vision that's another thing tapi this too would amount to nothing without this one discover yourself you need to understand really really well of who you are if you can if you can answer Uh, directly ya, mention five words about you. Kalau kalian masih uh, uh, gitu, you need to you need to still work on your self discovery. Itu tuh udah pasti kayak leadership training manapun kalian pasti ditanya gitu. So, uh, hopefully kalian gak ada yang pasti bisa jawab kan. Itulah. Terus uh, about entrepreneurship, entrepreneurship zaman sekarang udah pasti harus sustainable. The meaning of sustainable di sini itu tentang This one, kalau kalian pernah pernah lihat, social and uh, and permanent economic peace and partnership atau disingkat the five P's of sustainability, people, planet, profit, peace and partnership. Itu jadi semua business operations kalian, business journey segala bisnis itu harus involve these five dimensions or at least three yang tengah itu social, economic, environment. Itu. Jadi contohnya aja kayak you know the cassava bag and then Adidas with its sustainable fashion Patagonia and this one ini project kita aja sih iseng iseng aja jadi kita kayak sustainable straw tapi pakai rumput purun daripada plastik kan terus ini kayak big kind of like big projects uh, this kind of bio pellet is it's also uh, another project of mine itu yang bisa in, uh, replace batu bara in the future so this kind of things yang Sustainable business deh intinya. Okay, sorry lama. I have some words for you. Okay, actually, ini dari saya. I didn't quote from this, but this is just from my experience. Yeah. Just don't think of what people see in you too much. Okay. You can think of what they think in you, tapi kan itu sebagai self self reflection aja. Karena Indian juga kalian kalau dihujat ya emang dihujat gitu. So ngapain pusing? Ambil aja yang terbaiknya. Kalian juga harus perbaiki diri sendiri kalau ada yang kurang. Next, know everything, okay, including movies, guys. Maksudnya everything itu benar-benar everything. Karena kalian harus up to date sama dunia ini, especially in SDG world, ya. Yeah. Karena banyak banget yang emerging moves, movement sekarang itu banyak banget dan kalian harus keep up sama update itu. Terus, master your communication skills, guys. You can turn your enemies to your allies with words. Itu penting banget communication, guys. Karena Gak usah ngaku-ngaku punya leadership bagus kalau nggak bisa communicate properly. Udah, itu aja nggak usah nanya lagi. <laughs> And then learn anything about sustainability because it's simply the future gitu. Karena abis abis graduate, apa my graduation gitu, I actually was gonna apa ya apply gitu deh di apa di kampus di Perancis di Paris tentang sustainability. Tapi kan gara-gara COVID ya bisa. So that's that's how serious I want to get involved in sustainability. So, 
anything you wish for, you'd better start soon. Karena kalau enggak, ya itu kayak gue bilang tadi, wacana doang. Gitu. So life is all about journey. Don't forget it ya, jangan bawa stress. Karena setiap orang, journey-nya beda-beda. Jangan merasa iri atau merasa kayak ketinggalan sama teman-teman kalian karena perjalanan kalian tuh nggak sama. Gitu. Misi kalian juga nggak sama. Apa yang disamain? Itu aja dulu. Dan <laughs> yang masih bingung, ikutan aja dulu ya guys. Karena in the end, meskipun kalian awalnya nggak tahu tentang apa itu SDG, apa itu your dream gitu, you will discover your purpose someday. Trust me. Good luck ya. Thank you guys. Thank you, Rizky Oktorali. We are proud of you. Always have been proud. Always will be proud. Good luck with your future also. <laughs> Thank uh, you, Miss. Before we go to Mas Pediatil to put that icing on the cake, um, I, I was I was notified by that there is uh, ini ya, Bu Wita ya, ada pesantren Santri Pondok Pabelan. All of the pesantren sedang nonton kita live. Let's say hello kepada teman-teman kita di Pondok Pesantren Pabelan. Hai, halo semua. Assalamualaikum. Terima kasih sekali sudah nonton kami, teman-teman. Okay, we I know we are running out of time, but I mean, all the speakers are just amazing and inspiring. Saya saya tidak mau uh, apa intervensi karena waktu ya. So let's let's just uh, put that icing on the cake and have Mas Teddy Asril, our alumni IPMI MBA yang selalu mementor anak-anak muda. So tell us uh, your 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 comment, your advice for anak-anak muda ini supaya lebih keren lagi. Ya, selamat sore. Terima kasih, Bu Riva. Suara saya kedengaran jelas ya. Clear, crystal clear. Oke, okay, Ibu Riva, Pak Amar, terima kasih dari tim IPMI. Ibu Wita juga dari tim uh, Edinburgh uh, Award. Dan tim di belakang layar semuanya, terima kasih banyak. This is a very great uh, event and also distinguished four speakers. You are all amazing. Jadi saya ditugaskan di sini sebenarnya oleh Bu Riva untuk memercikkan api untuk menyemangati kalian. Jadi saya nggak mau naruh slide. Karena kalau nanti saya naruh slide, kalian akan ketarik ke slide saya. Jadi gini aja, saya akan share cerita kenapa sih kita sebagai generasi muda harus berperan. Nah, jadi gini. Uh, kalau berbicara belajar, saya aja nih yang umur segini, saya ini sebenarnya antara generasi X sama millennials. Jadi bilangnya x nials. Jadi kalian bisa nebak lah umur saya berapa. Saya ngalamin TV hitam putih dan saya juga ngalamin TV digital. Jadi kalian tahu lah ya umur saya di mana. Dan saya juga ngerasain digital life. Saya juga merasakan mono uh, uh, analog life. So um, kalau berbicara tentang uh, kapasitas kita, apalagi saya lihat audiens setengahnya S1, setengahnya juga masih sekolah. Dan yang penting sebenarnya yang harus kita trigger dari kita itu kita bisa apa dulu. Tadi kan hebat-hebat tuh ada ada presentasi empat, ada teman-teman yang main di, misalkan Wesley ber, per, apa, berprestasi di olahraga, Jessica dia main di art sama sama COVID, kemudian Nadi Russell self improvement, kemudian Rizky dengan leadership, they are all very very sophisticated. Pasti ada yang berasa ini deh, ada yang berasa nggak pede pas ngeliat presentasinya ah. Kayaknya saya nggak mungkin deh bisa. Ah, kayaknya udah mereka udah keliling dunia, udah begini, udah begitu. Saya kayak nggak mungkin deh. Don't, jangan. Jadi selama saya jadi mentor, Alhamdulillah Ibu Riva memberikan saya kesempatan mementoring beberapa siswa. Saya juga mentoring di luar. Dan semua menti saya selalu saya trigger, kalian itu sukanya apa? Saya nggak pernah bilang, kalian lakukan ABCD, no. Saya punya mentor tuh rata-rata anak-anaknya satu. Insya Allah kalau... Rapi nih, tahun ini saya akan punya mentor anak-anak SMA. Saya selalu bilang, kalian sukanya apa? Kalian bangun pagi itu cerianya karena apa? Walaupun jawabannya receh, kaleng-kaleng, don't prop, it doesn't matter. Kalian harus tahu dulu. Nah, teman-teman yang kalian empat tadi itu adalah, itu adalah passionnya mereka. Itu yang mereka suka. Makanya mereka berprestasi di bidang itu. Nah, jadi kita harus tahu dulu yang kita suka apa. So, segampangnya gini, Kak, saya tuh sukanya bikin kue. Kue-kue kecil dan saya pengen jual. Ini yang paling gampang ya. Kenapa nggak start dari sana? Start dari hal yang seperti itu, kemudian diperbesar seperti yang Rizky bilang tadi. di exaggerate dikembangkan spektrumnya. Dari mulai usaha kecil-kecilan sampai kalian nanti masuk ke SDG. Tapi kalau ada yang nanya, Kak, saya nggak ngerti SDG, nggak ngerti ini, nggak ngerti. Ah, sorry ya, kalian tuh millennials, udah masuk generation Z, kalian buka Google, jangan TikTokan dulu. 
Jadi tolong gunakan internet itu semaksimal mungkin seperti yang Wesley bilang tadi, tidak ada yang tidak bisa dijawab, buka Google, pakai kuotanya dengan benar. Dan itu yang selalu saya, saya encourage ke menti saya. Saya nggak mau terima pertanyaan, saya pengen mereka punya pertanyaan, jawab sendiri dan taruh ke saya. Dan kita diskusi. Nah, beberapa menti dari IPMI, itu saya support berdasarkan apa yang mereka suka. Mungkin bu, ber, apa, bersama dengan bimbingan Bu Riva juga, ada yang sampai ke Perancis, standing competition, ada yang sampai ke Hong Kong, standing competition, tanpa saya suruh, tanpa saya lock maunya apa. Kemudian di luar, saya juga support, mungkin ada teman-teman yang dengar YCLI. YCLI itu seperti ISEC, tapi punyanya US, dia di bawah US Embassy. Dan dua, sebulan atau dua bulan yang lalu, saya support YCLI Southeast Asia. YCLI Asia Tenggara itu mereka kompetisi adu, berapa negara itu ya, 12 sampai 13, 13 negara, berantem online, adu competition, akhirnya menang dan itu disupport oleh beberapa foundation dan mereka going global. Semuanya ngangkat yang suka-suka mereka. Ada yang bersihin pantai lah dari sampah, ada yang ngumpulin sampah organik dari rumah ke rumah. Itu semuanya receh loh kalau kita bilang mainin sampah. Tapi ketika mereka men-scale up, jadinya global dan itu dilirik sama investor. Dan itu those of you young people, you have the capacity. Seperti yang Rizky bilang tadi, kapasitasnya tahu, belajar lebih banyak seperti uh, berbicara tentang public speaking, berbicara how to develop yourself. Jadi kalau buat saya ya, generasi sekarang tuh nggak ada cerita, saya nggak bisa ini kak, saya nggak bisa itu kak, maaf. Semuanya udah ada. Apa sih yang gak, kalian nggak punya sekarang? Tutorial semuanya, semuanya ada di internet, semuanya ada. Jadi saya, saya lebih mengencourage ke sana. Terus ada lagi pertanyaan nanti, memang di luar kita bisa compete kak? Ini saya pengalaman ya. Saya aja sampai umur segini masih belajar dan Alhamdulillah tahun lalu saya masih dapat beasiswa. Itu beasiswa juga aneh. Saya dapat beasiswa itu gara-gara saya support kalian sebenarnya. Jadi mentoring yang saya lakukan di Southeast Asia, dilirik sama government Amerika, dan mereka tawarkan saya berangkat ke sana untuk sharing experience saya mementor anak-anak di Southeast Asia. Gak ada yang pernah nyangka kan. Jadi opportunity itu datang dari segala arah. Yang penting kita kerjain dulu, bisa, kita harus jual diri, In positive way ya, kalian harus mampu menjual diri kalian kemanapun kalian bisa didengar. Ada Instagram tuh untuk 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 exposure habis-habisan. Dan kemudian penyakitnya orang-orang Asia, terutama Indonesia, itu adalah low self-esteem. Belum apa-apa udah malu, belum apa-apa udah nggak bisa. Jangan. Saya bisa bilang sama kalian, Vietnam aja sama Kamboja itu udah keep up loh. Mereka udah kecap, mereka, mereka baru datang belakangan dan mereka udah berani jual diri itu in the global level. Filipin lebih gila lagi. Mereka tuh jual diri nggak pakai malu. Mereka jual semua proyek apapun yang mereka lakukan di, di negara masing-masing, mereka tawarkan berkali-kali, kepental, tawarin lagi, kepental, tawarin lagi, dan seterusnya. Itu yang penting. Karena kalian masih punya energi, tadi si Wesley udah bilang, you have so much energy, then you have to manage it, and you have to aiming to the right position. Jangan dilempar kemana-mana. Harus fokus. Dan kemudian, Kalian kalau gagal, kalian masih punya banyak waktu. Rata-rata umurnya di bawah 20, antara 25 lah. Gagal berkali-kali masih banyak waktu. Kalau saya gagal udah agak sore ya, udah udah mepet waktunya gitu loh. Tapi kalau kalian gagal, gagalnya kalian tuh bagus banget. Karena you will learn. Gak ada tuh ceritanya kalau orang gak pernah jatuh ya ke sandung gitu, terus kakinya luka, terus dia gak berasa sakit, ya besok dia lompat lagi ke lubang yang sama kan. Jadi enjoy enjoy the failure. Karena di failure itu kalian belajar. Nah, kemudian setelah setelah kalian mendapatkan itu semua, exposure di lokal dapat, kemudian connect to the community. Jangan main sendiri. Main sendiri itu useless. Oh, sekarang misalkan, wah kayaknya IPMI bagus nih aktivitasnya, tapi saya bukan anak IPMI. Kenapa enggak IPMI itu buka pintu kok? Kalian bisa main ke sana, kalian bisa connect. Ini ini Bu Ripa ya saya bilang, saya beberapa sebulan yang lalu saya belas satu competition punyanya UN global buat policy. Saya nggak ikutan di sana kebetulan cuma support promosi dan tiba-tiba ada student IPMI minta saya jadi mentor. Gak dibayar lagi. Sekarang saya harus mementoring mereka. Kagak dibayar global pula. Kalau menang mereka yang berangkat ke Europe saya tinggal di sini. But it's okay for me. Jadi selama saya masih bisa share the knowledge, kalian punya semangat. Kalian connect ke komunitasnya, ada ISEC, ada YCLI, dan setiap kampus tuh punya community. Gak ada alasan gak bisa ya. Saya udah tanya ke beberapa kampus, setiap kampus punya inkubator sendiri. 
Ini juga punya inkubator sendiri. Kalian main ke sana nggak usah malu-malu. Yang penting bawa proposal dan PD. Bawa proposal, PD kasih tahu nih, saya punya ini. Tolong bantu saya. Kalau ini kalau ini nanti bagus mainannya yang akan diangkat nanti nama kampus ini juga. Dan tolong konekkan saya ke sana ke sini ke sana ke sini. Of course guys, you have to learn English. Mau tidak mau, nggak ada lagi excuses-nya ya. Jadi itu saya bisa berbicara dari sisi the whole uh, high levelnya. Di luar mungkin masih banyak yang berasumsi nanti di luar bingung apa gimana enggak. Kalau yang people kalau udah masuk uh, eventnya yang uh, yang organization event itu semuanya equal. Bahkan yang dari Eropa Amerika pun akan treat kalian sama. Karena kalian membawa konteks country kalian sendiri yang mereka tidak mengerti. Jadi pede aja. Yang penting pede. Pede nggak tahu malu, maju. Bawa hasilnya. Nah kemudian, kalau berbicara tentang SDG, specifically, specifically untuk event ini, nanti kalian harus belajar SDG. Mau tidak mau. Oh nggak ada cerita, saya anak teknik mesin, saya teknik elektro, nggak mau belajar SDG, kalian ketinggalan. Nah, kalian sudah bisa lihat sekarang kalau berbicara kalau berbicara bagaimanapun kalian akan masuk job market nanti. Oke, okay. masuk job market. Di job market itu nggak ada lagi ceritanya. Oh iya, kita akan dulu kan resource dari Indonesia karena proyeknya kerjanya di Indonesia. Hati-hati ya guys, kalau masih mikir kayak gini, please wake up, please wake up. Ini udah telat dibangunnya. Jadi nggak ada lagi nih cerita. Um, saya akan dapat privilege karena ini negara saya, lapangan kerjanya buat saya, no. In the next 5 to 10 years, kalian bisa jual apapun ke negara tetangga dengan gampangnya. Ini sebentar lagi akan terjadi namanya digital economy. Kalian pagi nih, misalkan saya nih makan siang pengen nasi lemak dari Malaysia. Saya order pagi itu nasi lemak, besok siang datang di meja saya. Jadi kalian nggak bisa mikir lagi, saya aman di Indonesia karena saya rakyat Indonesia, akan diprotek oleh Indonesia, dan saya pasti kepake. Kalau masih mikirnya masih gitu, please wake up. Nah, terakhir, biar banyak waktu buat yang lain ya, Bu Riva. Ya. Saya akan cuma penyemangat di sini. Untuk experience dan learning, saya, ini secara individual saya menyarankan, belajar jangan, di, jangan dibatasi. Jadi, belajar itu keep growing. Misalkan, misalkan ambil contoh ya, lulusan... Saya berangkatnya yang agak lebih spesifik, spesifik, misalkan lulusannya dari teknik nih. Misalkan dia backgroundnya atau farmasi. Kalau farmasi biasanya lulus kan udah jadi apoteker, masuk rumah sakit atau masuk pabrik ya. Dah, that's it. Itulah hidupnya. Tapi zaman digital itu udah beda. Jadi jadi scale up your knowledge, scale, uh, scale up your skill, pelajari lebih banyak. Kalau kalian misalnya background farmasi, passion kalian apa? Saya kemarin, eh kema, bukan kemarin sih, udah beberapa bulan yang lalu, saya ngobrol sama anak farmasi kebetulan ya Bu ya. Saya bilang, kalian kamu passionnya apa sih? Dia bilang apa coba Bu? Saya party goers. Astaga, anak farmasi party goers. Oke. Okay. Terus saya, saya balikin, kalau kamu party goers, kamu lulusan farmasi, kira-kira gimana tuh passion kamu bisa masuk ke background kamu dan jadi duit buat kamu? Dia juga nanya balik, gimana ya Mas ya kata dia. Sekarang saya tanya, kalau seandainya party goers ini ada job desk-nya di suatu company, kamu mau nggak? Dia malah teriak, wah itu yang saya cari, kata dia kan. Nah, jadi saya mulai pelan-pelan meng-encourage mereka. Your passion, karena party goers itu kan cuma nama, tapi orang itu, orang-orang party goers itu biasanya cepat komunikasinya, mereka sangat engage, supel, dan gampang bergaul ya. Itu saya coba kasih sama dia, for you, you try to learn about the public relation. Kok coba kamu pelajari tentang public relation? Coba lihat isinya apa sih, saya kasih waktu seminggu. Terus dia balik, wah seru nih mas sebenarnya. Dan oke, okay, kalau itu kamu bilang seru, that combine it. Kamu backgroundnya farmasi, kamu anaknya gaul, kerjanya di PR, gimana kalau kamu kamu di PR perusahaan farmasi? Itu berasa berangkat kerja, berangkat main-main loh saya bilang. Kerja, dibayar, party goersnya jalan. Nah, ini maksud saya sebenarnya, whatever your background is, please combine with your patients. Please combine with the things that you like. Apapun social activity yang kalian kerjakan sekarang, whatever volunteering, kalau itu profesional, it will become your professional life in the future. Gak ada yang akan kebuang. Percaya sama saya. Karena apapun yang saya kerjakan sekarang, itu automatically sampai saya sadari pun, itu align dengan my professional life. Dan semuanya jadi satu, jadi satu career, jadi satu path of career. Jadi, balik ke pesan yang tadi, you are still young, Bahkan beberapa dari kalian itu generation Z ya Bu ya. Ada setengah audiens saya lihat. You guys have so plenty of times to fail 
enjoy your fails. Kalau siang fails, malam nonton Netflix lah. Biar ada rada balance sedikit gitu kan. Jadi enjoy your fails, expand your knowledge, coba semuanya gagal nomor sekian. Gagal tuh nggak usah dipikirin. Karena knowledge dan journey yang kalian dapat itu sebenarnya yang benar-benar penting. Satu lagi, networking. Jangan sok gaya-gayaan jadi anak mana, daerah mana, anak selatan, segala macam. Kalian nggak network, sorry. Kalian Hah? harus network. Kalian harus berani. Ini saya tantang ya, habis event ini saya pengen lihat berapa orang dari kalian yang connect ke saya untuk diminta mentoring. Nama saya jelas tuh di, 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 di screen. Saya pengen lihat berapa orang yang pengen ngomong sama saya, nggak malu-malu, just discuss with me whatever the way that you want to discuss. Nah, so this is what I've done so far for the generation of Indonesia. I, I love Indonesia, I love the generation of Indonesia. Dan saya pengen melihat Generasi Indonesia ini in global itu more shining, more into the surface, and kalian kalian itu membuat sesuatu yang bisa membingkit, membuat bangga negara kita. Don't 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 worry about the funding. Funding itu banyak di luar sebenarnya. Yang penting kalian bikin sesuatu yang menarik dulu dan ingat sesuai dengan konteks Indonesia. Jangan ke barat baratan. Jangan coba-coba apa yang barat punya nanti dibuat di sini lebih baik. Indonesia butuh apa dan kalian bikinin solusinya. Itu orang luar akan lebih appreciate. Kurang lebih begitu encouragement yang saya bisa bu, yang saya bisa share dengan teman-teman uh, sore ini semoga bisa bermanfaat. Terima kasih Bu Riva dan tim dari IPMI. Terima kasih. Thank you so much Mas Teddy Asril. Uh, he is a scholarship recipient ya, penerima beasiswa dari Eastwood Center ya, one of the, the best uh, leadership school also di, di, di luar negeri ya. But uh, uh, thank you so much for the uh, that icing on the cake. Uh, Sebenarnya ada there are some words beberapa kata daripada Mas uh, Pak Teddy ini. Uh, what what he said was that you know you have so much time and make mistakes. It's okay to make mistakes because you will never learn without mistakes. Mistakes are your biggest teacher actually. Dan juga bahwa keep on learning. You know never stop learning because life never stops teaching. Uh, itu mungkin pesan daripada Mas Teddy ya. We, now we do have time for question and answers. Semoga Wesley sudah balik. Wesley, are you back with us? Okay, if Wesley is not, not yet here with us, we have uh, Jennifer, Jessica, Nadira, Kiki, and Mas Teddy sendiri. So there are some questions. Yang saya lihat ada beberapa, satu dua pertanyaan ya. Uh, mungkin ada pertanyaan dari Hesti yang saya katakan tadi. Jadi mungkin saya coba uh, minta kepada our speakers ya, tamu kami Jessica and Jennifer. And Nadira juga tolong bantu. Uh, please do jump in, and Mas Teddy. Tapi it's a very classic question. Yaitu adalah dari Hesti yang menanyakan, kalau semang, lagi nggak semangat gimana dong? What is it that you do? Kalau lagi nggak semangat. Uh, maybe Jessica, Jennifer, you'd like to answer briefly. What do you do, guys? Masih di mute? Hi. So... Yeah. What I do is I like to remind myself why I'm doing it in the first place. What's my purpose, and that gives me motivation to go on. Okay, that's Jessica and uh, Jennifer. Uh, for me, if I'm not motivated, I will talk to my friends or family to get support and like that. Well, talking about it is good. Yeah. Okay, teman-teman, yeah, talk about it, share with it, share what you feel. It's okay. It, it's okay. I mean, don't put that burden di beban di kita semua ya. Just, just share it. Mungkin uh, Nadira, are you still with us? Yes. What do you have to say, Nadira? Kalau misalnya semangat, nggak semangat ya? Oh, um, lagi nggak semangat. Basically, like I do what I like. Like inside of your project, um, for example, like I'm doing campaign for mental health for the generation Z. And then instead, like, pasti rasa bosan itu kan pasti ada. And then, like, apa ya, rasa mau nyerah itu juga pasti ada. And um, doing an organization is not easy for me. I also need support from, uh, from my parents, from my teachers, and my friends. Yeah, basically, you need support and just do what you like and enjoy. Thank you, Nadira. So, what you're saying is, dan juga ya, mungkin... Support system itu support system ya bisa keluarga bisa teman ya itu sangat berpengaruh. It it has a big impact on all of us. If you have a good strong solid support system, then it's easier for many of us. Uh, itu juga go to your support system, identify your support system. 
Nadira, ini ada pertanyaan lagi nih, uh, mungkin bisa juga dijawab. Apa sih sebenarnya bedanya antara gender and sex? Since you are in gender equality, Nadira. Okay. Um, basically, for the sex education, itu um, kita ada dua part, and like sex yang sex making love and sex about gender. Kalau untuk membahas gender equality, kita membahasnya tentang um, kesetaraan gender, bukan yang like ya yeah, kind of sex thing. So it's yeah, the gender. The is like, uh, it's like yeah, it's, it's really different. Yeah, okay. So laki dan perempuan ya intinya seperti yeah. itu ya. Different okay. Different sex. Jadi kepersamaan antara apa menjadi hak wajiban dari seorang wanita dan seorang pria. Yeah. Maybe siapa Hesti? Uh, siapa tadi pertanyaannya? You can contact Nadira directly if you want to get to know more and join a movement daripada Nadira. Silakan. Okay, uh, I will move on to the other question, which is uh, okay. Ini dari Bonnie. Apa bedanya antara leader and a boss? What's the most important thing a mentor should have? Can I throw this question to Teddy Astrio? What is the most important thing for a mentor? Maybe ekspektasi dari seorang menti terhadap mentor itu jadi apa? Oh, oke. Okay. Um, ekspektasi. Jadi begini, selama pengalaman saya untuk mentoring, saya tuh lebih mem Jadi saya lebih membebaskan menti saya. Jadi saya meminta mereka datang ke saya apa yang mereka mau support dari saya. Saya tidak mem saya tidak membuat aturan di awal karena setiap orang akan datang dengan kebutuhan yang berbeda. Dia, mereka akan datang dengan jenis support yang berbeda. Ada yang datang minta diajarin public speaking, ayo. Ada yang datang minta diajarin business plan, ayo. Ada yang datang, ada yang datang hanya gara-gara nggak -gara pede ngomong sama orang, ayo. Tapi saya minta satu lagi setelah saya mengajarkan sesuatu, mereka harus come up with something. Mereka harus bikin project kecil-kecilan. Jadi saya, saya butuh result habis itu nggak cuma duduk-duduk di Starbucks, habis itu bubar, no. Jadi even though ini ada yang mereka engagekan ke skripsi, mereka nggak apa-apa. Yang penting proses skripsinya berjalan lebih bagus. Mereka engagekan ke social activity-nya, ayo. Jadi kalau saya personally sebagai mentor ya Bu Rifaya, saya lebih open. Butuhnya seperti apa? Kurang lebih begitu. Thank you, Mas Teddy. Mas I have one question also for Kiki. Uh, di sini sebelum kita ada, we're going to have some games after this ya, just to enlighten things up. Uh, and you guys need the reward yang semua udah datang ke sini. Kita udah kasih beberapa reward. Tapi uh, Kiki, ada pertanyaan yes. about a leader and a boss. Aha. Tell us the difference. Ya. Gimana ya? Uh, mungkin kayak if you if you ever heard about kalau leader itu leads the way, kalau kalau bos itu tells you uh, bukan tells you sih lebih kayak nyuruh nyuruh gitu bedanya gitu. Jadi itu sebenarnya leadership bagi saya itu bedanya sama bos itu lebih ke the the way of communicatingnya gitu loh. Karena jujur aja di SDG saya experience sebelumnya itu. Everyone has their own task kan, dan saya mostly selalu jadi project leadersnya. Jadi under the, under the paper and under the uh, task gitu, yes I communicate with them. Maybe as a boss, okay. Karena kan kayak you do what this, you do this. If if something goes wrong, blah 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 gitu. Tapi at the same time you're also trying to be a good leader too. Kayak guys, I know this isn't easy, but I'm sure blah 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 blah. Kayak basically balik lagi ke visi kalian tuh di empower ke others tuh bagaimana gitu loh. That's why I always emphasize kalau communication tuh penting banget. It's it's everything actually. So, itu yang simpel banget untuk ngebedain leader sama itu lebih kayak penyemangat aja sih. Soalnya kan you guys itu bersama-sama bukan bukan ada kayak the gap kalau kalian tuh atasannya dia atau misalnya kayak you know like the boss and the Workers gitu kan, biasanya ada gap gitu kan yang harus di respect atau apa. Di situ enggak, di yang movements tuh enggak ada yang kayak gitu. We act together gitu loh. Kayak kita semua ada ada role masing-masing gitu. Yang kita harus perjuangin bareng-bareng. Itu -bareng. togetherness aja sih. Just that answer okay. my the question. Thank you, Kiki. In fact, because of what you said that, saya tambahkan sedikit ya. So, yes. I always, uh, juga kita in Arab Me, kita, uh, there's something we all know that uh, A boss is a position. Leadership is not a position. Leadership is an action. Yes. Yes. So a boss, okay, you have a, a position. Belum tentu you have that leadership quality. 
belum tentu punya integritinya, belum tentu punya that honesty, that forward lookingnya. So that that's some little bit of the difference. Thank you, Kiki. Yes. Thank you, okay, <clears throat> now I am I'm supposed to give it back to Fikri because I need to give some. Uh, kita akan kasih sedikit hadiah dengan quiz and questions and answers apa gimana, uh, Fikri? Yes, Miss. Um, probably mungkin yang answer mungkin dapat hadiah mungkin seperti ini, Miss. Oke, okay, jadi yang udah jawab apa nih? Pertanyaannya akan ditaruh di mana? Uh, pertanyaannya bisa ditaruh di chat, Miss. And who is going to deliver this question and answer? Fikri. Game okay. activity. Oh, Bulia. Siapa, Bu? Who is going to conduct this question and answer and reward? Wait, Miss. Uh, it, uh, it's okay. It's it's actually it will be an uh, interactive activity, but will be led by Team GOA. Is that correct? Yes, yes. Uh, mm. oh. Michael, okay, go ahead. Okay. Go ahead Thank you very much. Uh, tadi sudah dengar uh, presentasi dari uh, awesome speakers. Ada Wesley, ada Jennifer, ada Jessica, ada Nadira, Kiki, dan Mas Teddy. Thank you juga Buripa sudah lead the way. Uh, sekarang kita mau uh, interactive uh, quiz. Jadi kami, tim kami dari Duke of Edinburgh International Award, kita bikin poll. Uh, poll ini nanti berisi 10 pertanyaan. Jadi teman-teman semuanya bisa klik uh, jawabannya. Nanti di end of the uh, seminar, nanti kita akan uh, reach out buat yang beruntung mendapatkan merchandise-nya. Begitu. Oke okay, ya? Saya share ya, Bu, ya? Poll-nya ya? Okay, everyone, please. Miss, sorry, there's not the English version of this. Bisa lihat? Bisa. Okay, someone, bisa kelihatan, but someone is asking about the English version. How about if we just say, uh, which organization um, give the uh, the term sustainable development goal? That's the number one question. Is it the United Nations, ASEAN? Uh, European Union, or is it us? It means International Business School. Second question, who is the webinar? Uh, who is the moderator of this webinar? Is it Rifa Zahirsha? Is it Sue Walker? Is it Joel Grant? Number three, where do Jessica and Jennifer Tan go to school? Uh, Singapore Intercultural School, Jakarta International School, Jakarta Nanyang School, National High School. So, are the participants supposed to write it in the chat, Paiko? No, just, just click. Uh, oh, just click. Okay. Can you guys click it? Ya, beberapa yang sudah klik. Nomor empat, cabang olahraga. Uh, which sport uh, is Wesley uh, trying to develop? Nunchaku, water polo, board gaming, esports league. Number five. Uh, SDGs again, uh, agenda uh, is supposed to be reached by which year? Number six, which is not part of the SDG, Sustainable Development Goals. Good health and well-being, partnership for goals, global increase in obesity, climate action. Where is the school at? What's the address? Bumi Serpong Dama, Jaya, Pondok Indah, or Kalibata. Which one of the speaker is studying masters in France? Katan, Nadira Ahmad, Wesley Gosali, Rizky Okturali. What's the name of international program which is uh, take it, taken by Jessica, Jennifer, or Nadira and Wesley? This program is actually run in over than 130 countries and territories in the world. Princess Award, the Chick of Edinburgh's International Award, Queen Elizabeth International Award, or Globally Recognized International Award. And the last question, gender equality. So which SDGs, uh, what number? 
uh, SDGs in SDGs. Number A10, B1, C6, D5. That's the end of the question. So has everyone submitted their answers? No, not yet. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, time's up. So we will share the results and we will reach out uh, the winners of the quiz by the end of the seminar. Thank you, Ibu Riva. Back to you, Ibu Riva. Thank you, Paeko. So we have some winners right now. Okay, let me just take this, put it down first. I see that Wesley has joined us again. Wesley, are you there? All yes, the way I'm here. Okay, great. We still have time. Do I have time, Bulia? Uh, it's actually... <laughs> Oh, you're muted. But okay, let's just say we have time because I really would like to have uh, uh, just a question from me. And I think uh, mungkin saya mau bisa mewakili banyak teman-teman di sini ya. And is also related to this partnership that we have with our partner, the Duke of Edinburgh. Sebenarnya, uh, the program itself, because in this in this room, there are 36 of my students, which are, I think more, mungkin ada 60 ya, uh, Bulia ya yang sudah enroll dari IFMI as um, participants for the Duke of Edinburgh Award. Now, what is it that in specific, in particular, how does the program really build that intrinsic motivation for, for you, Wesley, for Jennifer, Jessica, for Nadira, to keep on going and achieving what you're, you've achieved? Perhaps bisa di-share sedikit oleh, maybe Wesley, because the others have already gave some responses. Can you, can you help us with that? Course. Yes, please. Okay. Well, I think if you're in the business school or business degree or economics, does anybody familiar, I think, does everybody familiar with the 10,000 hour rule? 10,000 hour rule. Go ahead and explain it to us, Wesley. 10,000 hour rule is a basic rule. If you want to be really good at something, you need to repeat it like a hundred times, more than once, more than twice, more than twice, but exactly 10,000 hour rule. So it means you do it like over and over until you accumulate 10,000 hours. The Dove, the program itself, they train us, not train us, uh, ask us to do it like three months, six months, uh, and a year. It's actually the duration you need to do to complete this goal. From small part of time, partial moments, you will accumulate 10,000 hours. And when you, have this, this, uh, when you have this duration of repetition, of course, you will have like a proper execution, proper knowledge, proper know-how. You can it's applicable. It's like out of your head. Oh, I know it because I've been practicing for ten thousand times, ten thousand hours. Yeah, I think it's very important because it not gives you like a just a skill, but it's you a solid foundation of what you're going, what you're aiming. It's gonna be like a solid foundation. It's really good. Thank you, Wesley. How about, uh, do you have something else to say? Me? Uh, hmm. any I think, uh, I think if you acquire 10,000 hour rule, you can be acknowledged as an expert or as an uh, intermediate. Right. I think in the competitive world, if you're an, uh, going to work with somebody, you're going to compete with other people who are looking for jobs, right? You need to stand up. You need to prove that you have. So this 10,000 hour rule is a plus point for okay. the applicants who wants to try to look for a job. For the program. Good. Right. Thank you so much, Wesley. Uh, okay. I'd like to ask just uh, Jessica, Jennifer, Nadira, uh, and maybe Matedi and Kiki, just in one sentence, before we close, in just one sentence, each of you, what if any, would you give any motivating statements for teman-teman yang ada di ruangan di sini yang barangkali perlu dikasih motivasi that anyone can become a leader? Jessica, start with you and Jennifer. It doesn't matter how big or how small your uh, your change is, but as long as you do it together, we can make this world a better place. Jennifer. Uh, we can make a change, and you can make a change right now. Mantap. Thank you. Nadira. 
Nadira? Um, so, um, the small, small action of you have a big impact for the world. Thank you, Nadira. Kiki? Ikut, ikut, ikut dulu aja deh, guys. Cari ilmu kalau masih bingung ya. Soalnya dari awal saya ngampus juga, kan saya baru tahu SDGs, baru tahu organization stuff gitu. Saya awalnya emang coba dulu, dan I now have my own purpose. And I'm sure you guys will. Great. Thank you, Kiki. Mas Teddy. Um, mulai dengan empty glass, kosongin gelas kalian. Gak ada baper-baperan, gak ada takut-takutan, gak ada segala macam ini itu. Apa yang kalian suka, coba. Intinya adalah coba dulu. Karena kalau nggak dicoba, kalian nggak ngerasain journey-nya. Nah, along the way, mau jatuh bangun, apapun itu, enjoy it and, and get the lesson from the from the journey. Nggak mungkin orang akan akan apa uh, gagal dua kali. Coba dulu, take the action. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, Mas Teddy. Okay, so we've come to the closing, actually, final part. This is a sad part because I'm really enjoying today's session. I personally, saya belajar banyak. Dari anak-anak muda, banyak yang saya belajar dari anak muda. Every day saya mengajar di kelas di uh, kelas saya pun juga saya belajar dari teman-teman uh, student ya. Uh, so thank you untuk semua. Terima kasih sudah hadir dengan teman-teman yang di Pabelan. Terima kasih. Saya dengar juga ada Jakarta Nanyang School. Terima kasih uh, so much for attending. And in particular, terima kasih banyak kepada Wesley, Jessica, Jennifer, uh, Nadira, Kiki, Mas Teddy. The National uh, Director of uh, Buwita dari uh, teman partner kami. Terima kasih timnya dengan Eko, Putra, Namira, Nizma, and also did I miss anyone? Kalau dari partner, kalau saya uh, I miss anyone, please forgive me. But, but I also like to say a big thank you kepada tim ini yang setting this all up. Uh, thank you so much, Fikri, Great MC. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Nimas and everybody team dari Ami dari tim uh, ini ya. You know what we've done is actually we've, we've made ini pertemuan yang dahsyat sekali loh. Anak-anak muda di sini ketemu sama anak muda. I see the chat room itu penuh dengan interaksi yang bagus sekali. You, you you make contact with each other and that is the first step. You make contact with each other, get to know each one another and call Teddy, call Kiki, call uh, Wesley. I'm sure Jennifer, ke, Jennifer, Jessica, you won't mind. Uh, Nadira ya, kalau di, di, apa, di telepon, dikasih inspirasi, that's what it's all about. Do it together. Make the changes together. Thank you so much. Pak Fikri, si ganteng, I give it back to you untuk foto dan closing. All right, Miss. Thank you, Miss. First, thank you so much to Bu Riva and for all participants, for all speaker, and then for everyone. And then before we close, Our meeting today, there are some announcement about the e-certificate from Nadia. Okay, Nadia, please. Are we going to take picture? Yes, please. I hope so. Wait. Um, okay, I think we're gonna take picture now, Miss. Okay, everyone, please turn on your video and then show us your big smile. Kayaknya masih berapa kali ya, Fikri ya? Yes, Miss. We have a Hati lot of participants right ya. now. Ya. Okay. Ready, everyone? Okay, Kanadia, please. One, two, three. Uh, sorry, please give me time. Okay. Yeah, show your best smile, everybody. Ayo, anak-anak muda Indonesia yang keren-keren. Big smile, everybody. Okay, your best smile. Okay.
Kak Nyimas or anyone? Tiga, dua, I'll do it. Tiga, dua, satu, best man. Ha! Oke. Okay. Oke, okay, thank you. Udah? Oke, okay. thank you so much everyone. It was well spent. One afternoon well spent. Very inspiring. And the best with the, all, your future loh, teman-teman semua. And especially the speakers, all the best for your future. Please keep in contact semuanya. Pak Aman, terima kasih banyak sudah hadir dan mengikuti terus Pak Aman. Thank you so much. On behalf of uh, the Recovered in Work team, uh, we would like to thank you to Ibu Riva and also Pak Aman and all the team. All thank the you. Team. You are so inspiring. We shall do this again, Ibu Wita. Yeah. Inspiring the young and Next, learning from them. The, 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 uh, the, the stage uh, for the participant. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, for the youth. And also talk. Into Let's go develop them. Thank you, Ibu Wita. Thank you, thank you, Ibu Wita. Saya lagi terima kasih loh, Mas Teddy, Kiki, Jessica, Jennifer, Wesley, Nadira. Thank you so much. We'll keep in contact, please. Keep in touch. We'll send the certificate signed by Pak Aman nanti. To all speakers, ya, Wita. Terima kasih, ya, Pak Aman. Ayo, Fikri. Okay, Miss. Terima kasih teman-teman semua yang sudah hadir pada saat ini. Terima kasih Ibu Riva, Ibu Aurina, Prof. Aman, all the participants. Semoga seminar hari ini bermanfaat. Saya Fikri undur diri. Mohon maaf apabila tutur kata yang salah. Terima kasih. Sampai jumpa dalam webinar selanjutnya. Bye. Thank you, Fikri. Jangan lupa isi attendance ya teman-teman untuk e sertifikatnya Because there are also evaluation. Uh, Link-nya sudah di-share ya oleh uh, Panitia. There is a link, please. Thank you. Now. 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 No. No. Now. 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 It's. 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 Your time. Your time. My time. My time. Your time. My time. Your time. Your time, my time. Now, now, now is your time.
Where do you want to go? What do you want to do? Who do you want to be? The Duke of Edinburgh's International Award helps you explore who you are to discover who you could be. Join a band. Try coding. Learn a language. Or find your creative side. Give something back by volunteering in your community. Get active and take on a new sport. Cross a river. Climb a mountain. Walk a new trail. Camp under the stars. Work together with friends to make your own adventures. You choose how, where, what. Join millions around the world just like you and find out what you're made of. So, what are you waiting for? Discover you.